So with the stunning revelation that Kang actually appears in this episode, which was stunning for this vlogger who really felt that Kang would be revealed in a theatrical release. But in this case, we see Kang portraying himself as Kang the softy, as I call it, because his whole purpose in this respect to convince one of the Lokis to will them to kill him was Kang the manipulator. He uses his manipulation skills to come off as this haphazard kind of happy-go-lucky villain that seems less weak than powerful. But the reality that Loki even presents to Sylvie is that we can't trust each other and it's Loki's gut instinct, the Loki that we know, that's telling her, don't kill him because this is going to be worse for us. And she cannot control herself. And with the pure manipulation, Jonathan Majors, aka Kang the Conqueror, actually fulfills his his own destiny by having Sylvie go ahead and kill him, which creates this historical branch of the timeline timeline, excuse me, that he knows is going to create a much more vicious and predictable villain in what we know as Kang. And it turns out at the end of the series, this happens to be the case when we go back into the TVA and we see the statues of the supposed timekeepers manifest into the statue of Kang. And like all cliffhangers for Loki season two, we see Loki staring at Kang. But this conversation that happened prior to him realizing that the timeline branched to the point where Mobius, as well as Hunter 15, don't realize that he's Loki, but think he's another analyst in, TV, in the TVA. So this timeline branched to the point where it altered the timeline where Loki isn't Loki, but he's a TVA analyst. Great manipulation by Kang, and this is exactly what we thought would happen. Keep it here on Zenny62, and don't forget to like and subscribe.